Welcome back. We're joined by Dr. Charlene Bell, who is a local consultant, who is here today to talk to us about some of the psychological implications of being laid off. Um, Dr. Bell, I'm interested in hearing a little bit more about the stages that a person probably goes through when they go through this kind of a loss, either to being laid off or terminated from a job. Well, it certainly varies with individuals, and I don't think there's any way to prepare for this. Mm -hmm. I've often thought about the anxiety leading up to the fact that it might be my turn next. Mm -hmm. I, I think that uh, brings it. a lot of yeah. anxiety, but we're never ready for that final cut that we now uh, we know the news. Mm -hmm. uh, it's a loss. Any way you cut it, it's a loss. I had a, a client to me say the other day that the best way I can describe this, it's like getting a divorce and you can't see your children anymore. Mm -hmm. I've thought about that because the workplace for many people is an extended family. Mm -hmm. And when you now are outside of that family, uh, you're just absolutely lost. I think there's a lot of denial. I've heard examples where people uh, just go on living like it didn't happen. So I think it's very important that it's time to get real here when this really happens and do some things. But it affects you psychologically. Some personalities just flow better with this. If you've gone through a loss before or lost a job, and in this economy, that's not unusual. Mm -hmm. People have been around and they know they can survive it. It doesn't make it any easier, but they know that they can get through this. Uh, it affects their self-esteem just enormously on this because so many, and I'm going to use a gender-related thing here, I think a lot of men identify who they are with what they do. Mm -hmm. So now we have an identity crisis because the first thing we ask when we meet somebody is, what do you do? So how embarrassing is it to not be able to answer that question? I, and so there's a lot of embarrassment that goes with this issue. And I think it's even harder if you feel that you have been misperceived as having a deficiency before you let go. Because then you really take a hit with your value as a person because now there's something else. With the massive layoffs we have, there's a certain group uh, mentality that you're not the only one doing this. Mm -hmm. But you have denial, you have anger. And it's, it's so hard because Again, uh, this individual said to me, you know, it isn't just one person losing their job. The whole family has become unemployed. I never thought about it that way because it doesn't just involve one person. We all are affected by this experience. So I think there's a lot of anger. I think people have a tendency to get stuck in the stages of anger. Uh, sometimes they'll shut down and very active people suddenly just become non-motivated non -motivated because they have no structure. They have nowhere to go with this. So it's a very troubling time. It affects uh, certainly mental health. If you've had any kind of a situation before, if you're an anxious person, if you're a, a person who likes to have control, you suddenly find yourself out of control. Mm -hmm. So there's no way to do this without some degree of psychological impact. So if someone gets a layoff notice or they're are terminated because of the economy, what, what are some things that you would specifically tell them to begin to think about doing to start that road to recovery? Well, I think number one, you have to be uh, really careful that you don't isolate yourself with this. I think it is a time to get real. It's not like going and saying this is a rough uh, spot in our life. It, no, it's reality time. By that I mean it's time to set priorities. What do we really need to focus on while we go through this? And priority setting is absolutely essential. Now is it okay for me to get angry? Oh, if you don't, uh, the body will pick up the tab on that. Absolutely, because what happens is you stuff emotions and the body will not handle that. So it always comes out. We have people going to the doctors more often. We have headaches and backaches and pain, all kinds of things because people who have a difficult time expressing emotions tend to stuff it and become stoic and they don't deal with it. And there's no way for that to dissipate until we deal with it. So what's the best way for me to express the anger that I'm feeling? It's to talk to somebody that you trust about it. And I, re I think the families are the best support system we have 
However, we often take our fear, our frustration, and our anger out on the very support system that we are dependent upon because they are the people that we trust and they're the closest to us. And so we have to be careful that we aren't destroying and making it very difficult for the people who are there to support us. I think a lot of domestic abuse comes out of this utter frustration and helplessness. Controllers have a terrible time with this mm -hmm. because they're out of control, and it's a human condition. None of us like to be out of control. And so we have to figure out some way that we can get some structure back into our lives so that we have some control over it. So it has tremendous, depending on the persons and how they handle loss, how they handle uh, those difficult times. It's very individual. I think mm -hmm. it's very difficult to categorize them all in one spot. One of the things that I've seen in the individuals that I've met um, in my role is that sometimes I think people get stuck at some of these stages. They do. And, you know, it's almost as if you need to take a step, any kind of a step, joining a group, networking, sending out more resumes, looking at whatever it is, and I'd like to get your thoughts on that. Well, action is, is very important, mm -hmm. there's no question. And when I get really overwhelmed, I pull back. Mm -hmm. And action is very hard to come by. But you are absolutely right in the fact that uh, they can be very stuck and be anger, angry and bitter. We, we need to take a commercial break, but when we come back, we're going to continue our conversation with Dr. Bell, and we're also going to talk to a couple of our career makeover in employees that were, that were laid off. We talked to a couple weeks ago, so please join us in a few minutes.